Out what's going on in the greenhouse it's late winter we're coming up on spring so things are starting to move the greenhouse is starting to boom and i need to switch a couple things out so let's do a quick tour of inside the greenhouse so you can see exactly what we've got going on all right so it's pretty warm out today it's like 65 degrees right now and in here it's probably about 70 which is not a good thing because we're going up and down up and down and we'll get 70 degree days and we're gonna get some 50 degree days and 30 degree nights and 50 degree nights and that's why if you listen to the backyard gardens podcast which if you don't you should um i call this the heartbreak zone because honestly it'll break your heart this time of year because things will be going really good and it'll get really warm and then when i put it inside of this unheated greenhouse it just magnifies that so much more because it just gets a lot warmer in here so right now I'm leaving the door open. I'm trying to keep it as cool as possible for as long as I can. But uh, I got my scissors. So let's take a look and see what we got because first of all, I need to get something to eat for lunch. And I wanna show you guys what we got going on. All right, we got this spinach here and it's been really slow, but I reseeded some so you can see we've got some coming back up. And I need to fill in a gap here and here with some more seeds and then that will kind of give me a, a little bit of a succession but i can pack a lot more spinach in here and that's what i'm going to be doing probably this afternoon so i have the goal is to keep it cool because it doesn't really like to grow or really sprout when it gets above 70 degrees and because it'll get like that in here i got something on my glass here when it gets that warm in here it just it won't sprout so I need to kind of time it with the weather and then give it enough time to to come up but you know I do have shade cloth to put in here on the top and that does dramatically lower the temperature but at the same time it's a shade cloth and this time of year we're getting more and more shade but we don't have a lot so we need to kind of make sure we keep it off for as long as possible until the sun really starts to get high and that should be in about a month or two the sun should start getting a lot higher and then we'll start getting a lot more warm days and then i'll put that back up there but um it does help dramatically i think it lowers the temperature by 10 to 15 degrees during the day which is a lot my kohlrabi look at that ready to go nice and pretty that one's only a couple days behind Let's see if I can move this out of the way. Yeah, just a couple days behind. And that will clear the way for all of this. So this is all turnips that I reseeded. I have a couple left here. One, two, three. They're ready to go. So I can pull all of these out. Look at that. And what that'll do is that'll let more light come in because the light comes from the front of the greenhouse back. Something I deal with a lot is having enough light because when the sun's low like this and the light comes through, I need to make sure that I'm staying on top of it because that little bit of light actually makes a big difference. You're talking about, <clears throat> you know, right now we're probably getting about maybe five hours of light in here. So by lifting these things up and pulling them out, I can add another 30 minutes or so of light, which when you're running low on light is a big difference. So, you know, we can harvest these things and then we can reseed and then get more back in its place. But we just want to make sure that the light availability is definitely there. Came back and put in these turnips. I actually added in a cabbage back here and the goal is to harvest all of these because that cabbage is going to take up this whole area here and I put in a couple more turnips right here and then we have our kale so that's doing amazing and we're going to harvest a little bit of that and just have that for something to eat and again by harvesting this on this side the sun can get right in there and hit those peas a little bit better along with anything else on below i have some radishes down here that are honestly over ripe so we'll eat those too they are uh they're gonna be spicy but that's okay i like spicy peas are doing amazing i don't know i've been kind of frustrated though i've got a lot of growth but I don't see a lot of peas on here. I mean, I have this one right here, but it's not even ready to go yet. So I don't know exactly what's going on. This is my first year growing 
shelling peas in here. So it's honestly, it's just a big test. Look, what is this? Oh, I thought that was a stink bug. I was like, not yet. But yeah, see, and the problem is I need to, I need to make this trellis go up to here because they get up here and then they get heavy and then you can see that they start to fall. But we can work on that, you know, everything. I don't know what else to put in here that's trellising in the winter time that can take the cold. And last year the peas did pretty good. Look, here's a good pea. And honestly, like something like that is probably too far gone. But I can shell that and put it on a salad or something like that. Looks like I'm going to be making a salad today. We have, um, what is this? This is mustard. But because of the heartbreak zone, it started to bolt. So what we're going to end up doing is just getting more seeds. So you can see we have one and then two. But the amazing thing is they smell amazing. They're so good. And then down here, we've got some collards. So we had aphids at one point, but we were able to get a hold of them. And I actually just used dish soap and water for them. Didn't even have to use any kind of neem oil, which was good. So, but you see, look underneath. See how I planted the radishes underneath? So now I can pull those out. And what that did is it outcompeted all of these weeds that we've had. So it's just starting to knock them down a little bit more. And then our chard. Our chard is just something special this year. Just done swimmingly well. But you can see that we've got rainbow chard and bright lights chard. No, ruby red chard, I'm sorry. And bright lights chard. And it's doing really well. And so we'll start harvesting those too because all of this that we cut through, it'll just let light go all the way through. And then the same thing, see how it's out-competed the weeds, so we just have like a little bit here and there. Before this was, when these were small, they were just totally filled up. Honestly, in here, a weed outbreak is horrible because it can't go anywhere. It just spreads everywhere and takes over, so I figured instead of like weeding all the time, I would just out-compete it. And that's basically, it's, it's worked out pretty well, it hasn't been great. But it's worked out really good so far. Um, I will probably continue to do that. And what I'll do is when I start harvesting these things, I'm going to put, well, I know what I'm going to put in this place. I'm going to actually try and grow some zucchini and squash in here and get an early crop and see if I can't get this to keep the squash vine borer out long enough. And I'll continue to do my other treatments like I've done in my previous videos, which you can find right up here somewhere. And that should help keep them at bay a little bit. I mean, I'm thinking if I just limit the amount of space that they can come in, then it'll be good. They already like heat, so I can get started a little bit earlier. I can direct sow them, or I can start a couple seeds ahead of time and stick them in as plants, which, you know, is not the best idea, but I mean, you buy them all the time at the store like that, so why not, right? Um, we'll see what happens, but those will spread out and they should choke out those weeds as well. And then what we'll do is we'll shut the doors and close everything and we'll actually solarize this by just getting it really hot in the summertime and then opening it back up and then hopefully that will take care of it and we'll, when we amend the bed too we'll put mulch down and all that stuff and I actually need to come back in because it's starting to get warm and put mulch in and I'm going to use a straw and that'll help keep that soil a little bit cooler for some of these cooler vegetables but um, let's finish up on the not so good news this is I think you can tell it's purple cauliflower and I put them in young, but because of those temperature fluctuations, they just basically formed ahead and then immediately started to bolt. And it's even sending off some side shoots, which I mean, like, what is that going to do? Nothing. So I'll probably end up pulling that out, but I thought ahead and I stuck a cabbage over here as well. And so this cabbage again is going to spread all this out. Man, look how dry this is. I need to water. I will be doing that stat so what I'm going to do in about 30 seconds is I'm going to pull these out and then replant in its space and try and you know reorganize as much as I can around here because this you know I don't really 
even though this is going to seed, I don't want to save seed from this little plant because honestly, I don't know if it's going to give me good seed and it hasn't grown long enough or done anything to show me the genetics of it. And I have that guy out there that never, that I never got to harvesting that's bolting and it's so far along that I know, look how big it is. I mean, it's going to give me a good viable seed off that. So that's what I'm going to do. And here, what I'll probably end up doing, actually I know I'm going to end up doing, is putting another cabbage in next to it, just so that it can kind of fill in and go more bit, you know, I put it in, it's still a little moist down there, but I put it in maybe two weeks ago and it's held. So we've even gotten some freezing and warm temperatures. Just hopefully we can keep this cool enough so it doesn't bolt. And by it being right next to the door here, look, that's what I'm going to grab and put in here. By the door here, it's getting that cool breeze and then that'll keep it kind of knocked down a little bit. And then I'll come out here, you know, if it gets a warm day, I'll turn on the water and this mister right here will come on and then that will help cool the temperature of the soil and the leaves. And then that should give us, you know, give it a good chance to kind of bounce back. In the time that I've been planting in this greenhouse, which this is my second year, I've learned that you've got to be fast to react and you've got to really stay on top of it so you can make the best use out of it. I mean, you want to be as efficient as possible. And so just by making sure you're putting plants in, having something ready to go, all that's good. Um, I didn't talk about up there is a shelf that I have in here. I have one teeny weeny shelf. I know it's not good. I need to get another one but I can fit 12 seed trays on there. So 12 six packs. And what I did before, if you go to my other video, which I'll link right here, it does, it showed, um, I had like broccoli and cabbage and kale and kohlrabi and all that stuff that I started in the greenhouse in seed in December and it made it through like 20 degrees. But what I'll do now that it's starting to get later is I've run out of, I'm running out of space inside my house for my seeds for this year. So I'm going to take some perennial flower seeds and start them out here because I mean, they can make it through the cold. They'll get a jump start because of the heat in here. So they should be farther ahead than if I direct sowed them in my garden. So that's just using the best out of it. I mean, that little seed shelf right there, if you think about it and I plant, what is that? Um, six times five is 30. So 60 uh, perennial seeds. And if each one of them turns into a plant, you know, they're about $7 for perennial, perennial flowers. I mean, you can do the math, you know, um, I'm not going to do that right here because it make me look like an idiot, but by doing that, I can save a lot of money and get a lot more flowers going and starting them now in here will give me more time. So I do plan to put another shelf right here and then right here. And then that should give me more space to start seeds and stuff like that because I'm growing mostly in the fall and everything is nice and low. It doesn't get real tall. So there's no need for me to really save space above. What I need to make sure about is that it doesn't shade too much. And by starting them further back, I do um, minimize that risk of them overshading or overshadowing some of the plants that are growing in the ground. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull some stuff up and then replant and we'll see what we can get in the ground.
so I decided to do a couple things different than I said I was gonna do. Always happens that way. Every time I go to stick something in the ground, I feel like I change my plan every single time. But I think it's gonna work out and I'm gonna explain to you why real quick. So I added more kohlrabi here and I just kind of filled in the gaps of where I removed that stuff. And then I had some turnips, so what I did is I came in and interplanted one, two, three. And the reason why I did that and I put a couple of kohlrabi here along with two cabbages, so there's three cabbages, is very simple. You're gonna grow way faster than the cabbage, so my theory is, and it's, it's worked for me in the past for a lot of things, is they'll come up real fast, I'll harvest them, I wanna get them out of there, and then the cabbage will have plenty of time to grow. So that's really kind of the idea is just kind of interplanting in between, making sure you have things in there that grow faster. That's why I planted those radishes underneath because again, you know, back in the day, um, which I mean, back in the day, I mean in the fall, because they'll grow underneath and I'll pull them up and it won't hurt anything. But speaking of radishes, the one other thing I'm gonna do too is I decided instead of harvesting them, what I was gonna do is I was gonna let them go to seed because by the time I come in to plant my uh, zucchini and squash and stuff like that they should be about to flower and go to seed so it's not going to hurt anything so that was a big thing with this greenhouse too is using it to get more seeds because i can isolate them i have no other radishes growing in here so nothing will interfere with it so it should work out in my favor i hope and this is what i harvested out of here it looks like a big pile of crap but it's actually all of this is edible vegetables. So it's kale, chard, collards, uh, kohlrabi, a couple turnips, and some radishes. All right guys, so if you like this, thank you so much for being here. Give us a thumbs up if you want, and uh, subscribe. We'd love to see you again. Check out the Backyard Gardens podcast, Tuesdays and Thursdays. We'll be right here on Tuesdays chatting live with you at 10 15 a.m. so uh, you can watch the podcast and talk to us at the same time but until then we'll see you guys later see ya